a few years that it was going on, I was in Sri Lanka anyway. And uh, um, so, you know, all of that was interesting. I, I generally, I think, and I'm most writers, like to be able to uh, spend a lot of time with other writers and also have an access to lots of readers. And I'm not sure that that happens as, as well as it could. Um, Why is that? At Gaul. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that, uh, for one thing, it's space. Um, you know, the, the halls are small, so there's a, there's a limit to how many people you can fill into a place. But also, uh, there are the, all the same issues that have been talked about a million times, so I don't really want to be, you know, that... Repetitive. That yeah, I don't want to, you know, about uh, cost mm -hmm. and things like that. And in general, I think writers don't like things that feel exclusive or are so circumscribed by uh, the upper classes. I mean, we are not we don't generally belong so you know ourselves so it's uncomfortable and you want to feel like you know because you open, you're, you're open. You, you want to feel that openness which you know pen places like uh, pen world writers and um, Virginia Fall for the book and all these other writers festivals do um, you want to feel open and you want to be able to find stories and you you don't get that if you're protected from um, learning more about uh, the, the gamut of literature that is available in a place that you're going to, particularly if you're coming from there to here. This may sound a very funny question, but do you think you might have you might have had the same degree of success uh, as Ruani Senimiran uh, and not as Ru Freeman? Um, They're both the same person. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, people would find it harder to find my book in the States because it's a harder name to remember and you're Googling most of the time or you're buying from Amazon, it's hard to know. But the ti it's usually Googling the title of the book, so it doesn't matter. But Rue Freeman is who I had been ever since I went to the United States because in the States, people can't pronounce my name properly. And they annoy. And whenever they mispronounce my name, it makes me angry. It does. And so, okay. um, <laughs> so Rue is uh, sort of like it's an endearment. So whenever someone says Rue, it used to make me feel you know, positively predisposed towards that. Warm to this warm person. Towards this person. Yeah. Whatever they did afterwards was something else. But then, um, so I stuck with Rue, and then I got married, and uh, I have Sri Ratna, Rue, Sri Ratna, Ruth, Sri Ratna Freeman, yeah. And uh, so that's how I went. But the funny thing about that is that um, um, a friend of mine, Ranjan Madhugal, a friend and, um, you know, fan, you know, someone I've admired for, from, as I think, the entire country for you a long time. You're one of time. his fans. I am one of his fans, yeah, okay. yes, and always will be. And uh, he had said he was sitting on a plane flying to one of his, you know, important events, and uh, somebody had been reading my book next to him and had said, oh, you know, this is a and writer, do you know her? And he had said, Rue Freeman, you know, I, I don't no, think I, I know, know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> but then he looked at the bio and he realized uh, who it was, and uh, he said, oh, actually, I do know her. So uh, My teacher's daughter. Yeah, my teacher's daughter. I don't know whether he said that, but... Uh, but yeah, so I think most people, and I've, I've got letters from Sri Lankans who've read my book uh, and who took it, picked it up without knowing that I was Sri Lankan and then realized that, you know, I was Sri Lankan, so. so it's a mixed bag. Yep. Back to the GLF. Um, as a writer, do you think it's a, it's a, it's a good nurturing ground for, for the up and coming writers, the, the non-established writers, not the ones like yourself, but the others? Um, Springboard, all that? I don't know what it was like this year, you know, and Sharm was in charge, and... Uh, the year you were there, yeah. The year that I was there. Um, well, there was one session for uh, Sri Lankan writers, and that also was, you know, Jeffrey Dobbs came to that briefly, too, as well, and I think they uh, encourage and are happy that it takes place. Um, and um, there, was a, there were a lot of Sri Lankan writers. There weren't enough of the foreign writers there, and I think part of what makes it difficult for, for writers, Sri Lankan writers, is that they don't have access to the industry, you know, the publishing industry and the uh, publicity that you get from being outside. Um, and that, I don't know if the GLF does as much or ha did they do more of it this year, I don't know since I wasn't here. Um, and it is something that you do do at festivals uh, in the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the smallest festivals, um, for instance, I there was the main literary festival, which is a very tiny festival, but they uh, really make use of the people that they're bringing in. So I opened that festival one year, a couple of years back, and um, it was a discussion about literature and international literature, because that, that, um, that was their theme. And they had me, who was obviously foreign, and could talk about things in this global sense. And it's a very small 
you know, a coastal town in Maine, it's a tiny state. Um, and then, and I got, the, I got the opportunity to talk about Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan writers, and um, I think most Sri Lankan writers who are outside in uh, outside Sri Lanka do do that. Um, and I've had several wonderful opportunities because I'm on um, the editorial board of the Asian American Literary Review, and then I'm uh, been invited to talk at the U.S. State Department and you know various places where uh, the Smithsonian. Uh, where I can highlight that and maybe... And, it, and you do get exposure as well. Yeah, I, I get exposure, but I also get to m make people interested in uh, Sri Lankan writers. But I, uh, but a festival can do that to a greater extent than, than someone like, you know, I can. I can, but, um, but if a festival were to bring in, for instance, publishers and editors and agents uh, who could meet with... Uh, writers then that would be incredible you know if they could reserve a couple of spots I mean it's a small festival so there's only a certain number of spots and you want to bring lots of writers in but if you could reserve a few for um, for those kinds of personal meetings or even to uh, have a panel and discuss publishing and discuss writing and discuss what it takes and you know that kind of stuff I think that would be very useful for Sri Lankan writers I also think that they could include um, more um, you know, Sri Lankan writers, uh, you know, local writers, for instance. Uh, in English uh, or in the vernacular? In, a, in, in, in Sri Singhal and Tamil. Yeah. Um, you know, Rajita Disanayaka, who's a playwright, I know, and uh, uh, Jayatilaka uh, Kamal Lavira, and, you know, there are some others and uh, who have never been invited. And I think giving them exposure and creating this sense that... Uh, an acknowledgement of their expertise and their because I mean uh, some of the those Sri Lankan uh, you know local writers are uh, really far more skilled than some of the writers writing in English and but they don't get that exposure and maybe there are other venues where they do get exposure but if you're having a festival that is a literary festival um, then I think it would be nice to have um, those kinds of people invited. Okay, back to our next break and back at the show very soon. Now, leaving aside a disobedient girl, let's talk about Ruani Senivaratna, daughter of Garmini and late Indrani, and Malinda's sister. And Arjuna's sister. Arjuna's sister. Who is she? She's uh, a person who was much bullied by her older brother, particularly Malinda, uh, all her life and continues to be bullied by him. Even now? Uh, even now, because he consistently w uh, wishes to let the entire world know, or he'd like to persuade the entire you know, populace that I am older than he is, but I'm not. I'm younger than he is. So I just want to say, categ categorically <laughs> say it <laughs> on TV that I am younger than Marlene Dasenivaratna, who's my older brother. <laughs> By how many years? Uh, um, g a great many years, since I am only 30 years old. So I'm, I'm uh, much younger than he my He would be brother. late 30 years. Yeah. Classic guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 now, you were born into a family of writers and many boys, but two brothers who are these many boys well all my cousins were boys on both sides of the family and uh, my mother said you know all her sisters had boys and my father's brother and sisters had boys till I was uh, a teenager and then th we had uh, two girls and then my mother taught at a boys school so the whole uh, kind of um, uh, tenor of the house was male and uh, and my mother enjoyed the boys as you know very well she loved her students and they loved her back and so um, so that's what was the culture of the household for me. So you fitted in? You blended I did. in seamlessly? As I said, I was an androgynous boy, you know, okay, yeah, boyish, yeah. tomboy. So, and I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a boy, but um, it was, you know, I, I certainly had the build, but I, because I was never one of those, you know, feminine, feminine girls. you know, curvy lata types, you know. I was never one of those. I was always this skinny, you know, short haired. You were um, you were a, a Rooney type. I was a Rooney type, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was school life like? School was, um, you know, strict. Studious girl, naughty girl, what, what, what? No, you know, I was. All the um, mischief, like Malinda. I was expelled from uh, the convent. Um, you were expelled. But I was I for doing well, what? For smoking you know, I, or I, what? I think no, <laughs> no, just for being bad. And I think that was. Uh, uh, I mean, HFC? I think HFC, yeah, but uh, but I was invited back. I mean, I think it was just a you time out, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think they just wanted to teach me a lesson and make me come to my senses, okay. which I'm How trying old to were do. You at the time? Uh, very young, okay. uh, you know, just before my, just after my O levels, okay. and so. Um, 
But when they invited me back, my, you know, my mother said, no, I'm going to take her and put her to a school that's better suited to my daughter's spirit and talents. And, and she put me to, uh, into ladies. And uh, so I, you know, I spent the rest of my time at ladies. But I felt that, um, you Which know, school do you feel you belong to more? Agency. Now, in retrospect, I mean, I think I, I belonged. I think my roots are certainly deeply uh, within the convent, and I have all, you know, I, I certainly, even as a Buddhist, absorbed all the Catholic guilt and, you know, feeling of, uh, uh, you know, underskirts and, you know, modesty. Um, that modesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I give, I try. I Decorum, try. dress Decorum. code. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Thank God okay. these cameras at, at, at this at this angle. Right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but in gen in, in real life, in, in normal life. And uh, and then uh, I, I don't think I would have navigated ladies as well as I did if I didn't have the background that I got and the kind of uh, inner uh, stability that I got from the convent. And so I, I credit both schools. I mean I think and I remember writing an essay for I think the L C Sonia one time saying that uh, um, if HFC taught me how to uh, deal with the world, then Elsie showed me the world. And okay. so, so I think both those things are certainly a part of who I became later. Right. And um, how does Mark, your husband, tolerate you? I don't know. Um, he's a he's gem. He's very quiet. Yes. He, he's very, 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 uh, let's say, non committal at times. Well, he's reserved. He's reserved, yes. And he's uh, he's very intelligent. He's very reserved. He's very uh, good, and uh, but he's also very funny and in, you know interesting in uh, in my life, and uh, and provides a, a perfect foil, I think, for me. He's almost like a frame in which I can just be this person that I am, and Diva. he and well, uh, not so much, but just <laughs> just be you know uh, outgoing, you. be me, and he and he lets me be that person, and. Uh, uh, so yeah, I do wonder why he tolerates me. I remember right from the get go, <laughs> I was saying, "Don't, don't, you know, don't treat Mark like that." And in terms of you know even fussing about anything, but um, because he really is a, a wonderful man, and he's, uh, uh, I, I don't think I could be see, see myself married to anybody else. So, um, so, uh, so I don't know. You'll have to have him over here <laughs> to sure. ask him how he. And how does your daughter tolerate you? Daughters, three daughters. Yes. Uh, so yes. Okay. You know, how I do they all? Yeah. Yes. How yeah, you knew the first. the first one. She just told me this afternoon that uh, she doesn't find me so difficult. No. Yeah, I mean, she finds me difficult at times, but not that difficult. So I was very grateful to hear that <laughs> that from her, that little check mark from her, and she's very concerned about me. I mean, she's uh, she's enormously talented and very. Um, hard-working in ways that I don't always understand because I wasn't that kind of student I uh, certainly not until the older was the other was yeah and onwards I was but not till then and uh, and she's in high school now and I I don't un you know I don't always relate but I and I admire her a lot in for all that she does and deals with and she's a very good athlete and she's a very good student and she's uh, very she gets better grades than her mom Oh, much better, much better. I, I, I have come. Um, I, I think I came thirty-eighth in a class of forty students. Once. Wow! So, so you know, and and look at me now. I'm on TV, so there must be something. <laughs> you know, there must be. Uh, that, that was at the convent. So, your two brothers. What kind of influence have they had on you, in shaping your spirit and your life and yourself and your being? Well, I've always admired both of them for all that they've done. I started writing, actually, the first book, the bad book, um, when my oldest brother, because I was thinking about my oldest brother and uh, and uh, kind of the relationship he was in, and um, that triggered that story, and I started writing about that. And uh, in and Malin, the who Puncha, is the one who I turn to always with my writing. I mean, he's the only one who read uh, A Disobedient Girl before it was sent off to my agent um, and he's the one I trust to tell me the things that are wrong um, and because he's able to do it without I mean apart from telling me the bad book was a bad book uh, I was coming to that which again which you know, scoffed which I, I scoffed time. at mm. the time but at the same time I, he, he won't you know he won't tell me an untruth he'll tell me